Namaste. So I got a message from a friend, and he's saying, well, if someone came up to you in the middle of the street and asked, how can you prove you're enlightened? What would you say? So I wrote him back, well, you have to determine the criteria for proof of enlightenment. And he said, no, 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 you're the one who's enlightened, so you have to do that. So I just let him sit with that for a while. <laughs> I said, that's not fair. You're the one who's demanding proof, because obviously you have no faith. So what is your criteria? What would you believe? You know, like, get smart. Uh, would you believe, uh, <laughs> you know? It means it's phony. It actually means there is no proof. You know, but what if there were? What would it be? What would it look like? Well, I guess we could start with the qualifications for the study of Vedanta and the Upanishads. Uh, those are given in Shankaracharya's commentary on Vedanta Sutra or Brahma Sutra 111. And we went over those in a recent video. Here they are, discrimination, vivekaha, knowing the difference between the temporary and the eternal, sannyas, or renunciation, the six treasures, which are moral and ethical uh, and also psychological states that one should have, and finally, mumukshutvam, the all-consuming desire for enlightenment. Now, these are the qualifications, not for enlightenment, but for beginning the study of enlightenment. Why do you need such high qualifications? Because if you don't have them, you'll get it wrong. I guarantee. I deal with people every day who comment on this channel and I have to delete their comments because they're so off. They're so wrong. You know, enlightenment means realization of Brahman. And Brahman is the highest thing there is. It's infinite. So how can you even express it in words? It's not possible. So this is the thing. How are you going to prove to another person that you are enlightened if enlightenment is something beyond words? It, that means it's also beyond proof. Because the only way we have, since enlightenment is completely subjective, is to talk about it. So, I mean, I guess you could say, well, if somebody has deep knowledge of enlightenment from the scriptures, we could say they're enlightened. I would go even further. I would say if somebody not only has deep knowledge from the scriptures, but they also have original insights into the nature of enlightenment that are in harmony with the scriptures, that don't disagree with them or violate any of those precepts, then you could say they're enlightened. That would be a pretty good indicator. Or you could say, if somebody is seen not to have any material desires, you know, but this is a slippery slope. <laughs> Where do you draw the line? You know, there are all kinds of exceptions to the rules. I mean, uh, Krishna had so many girlfriends when he was growing up, and they were all other men's wives. And uh, Parashuram, 
another incarnation of Vishnu, slaughtered all the kshatriyas in the world. What was it? 11 times or something like that? 21 times? Uh, you know, thou shalt not kill, but yeah, he didn't pay much attention to that one. And uh, I mean, there are so many examples. Janaka Maharaj, the father of Sita Devi, the wife of Rama. You know, he was a great king. He was an emperor. He had tremendous wealth, tremendous territory and power, armies, you know, other kings following him, ready to do whatever he told them. He became enlightened by the instructions of Yajnavalkya. Yet, he continued to be a king and to do all the things that kings do. So, there are so many exceptions. And of course, if, like me, you came up through the, the Tantra lineage, then, of course, you're going to be doing so many things that are not normally considered, you know, part of a sadhu's life. <laughs> but these don't really make any difference because ultimately there is no proof for enlightenment. Why is that? Well, let's run through this little scenario. Someone comes up to me and says, how do you prove that you're enlightened? Well, first of all, I never claim to be enlightened. I only claim that I have knowledge of enlightenment, and I can share that with you, and that will help you. Like everybody who leaves a comment on one of my videos, hey, Guruji, I tell them, no, I'm not a guru. I don't do the initiation thing. I'm not a member of any particular spiritual organization or lineage, although I have initiations from several lineages, I don't consider that I belong to them. So I'm not limited by them. And another thing is, well, suppose I come out and say, okay, this is the proof of enlightenment. Then the question is, is that proof valid? Is that really the proof of enlightenment? Or could it be something else? And you can go on questioning like this forever. It's called an infinite regress. What's the proof of enlightenment? And I say, X is the proof. And you say, well, how do you prove that X is the proof? <laughs> and whether I say or the questioner says what the criteria for proof is, it's available or is subject to questioning in the same way. And that can go on and on forever. So we cannot say there is a valid proof. However, I can tell you one thing. It takes one to know one. <laughs> you know, I like to use the example of rich people. If you've ever hung out with really, really wealthy people. They know each other, even if they're like dressed down and acting casual and, you know, trying to be stealthy and not really flaunt their wealth. Other rich people can recognize them. It's just a vibe, you know, it's a mood, it's a certain attitude. And they know this, you know, by, by seeing each other. So in the same way, and there are, you know, there are other groups that are similar. I don't need to go into that. But basically, with enlightened people, it works the same way. If someone is enlightened, they can recognize someone else who's enlightened. And really, you know, what is the difference from the point of view of enlightenment, what is the difference between someone who's not enlightened and someone who is? Well, the only real difference is knowledge. The enlightened person knows, aham brahmasmi, I am Brahman. 
Tatvamasi, you are Brahman too. But unenlightened people don't know. That's really the only difference. The Mandukya Upanishad, that famous shloka 7 that describes Turiya, says the only proof of which is the belief in Brahman, belief in the self. If you have that belief, because the self is imperceptible, Brahman cannot be perceived. Why? Because we are Brahmans. <laughs> so how can you perceive the perceiver? See? I mean, Brahman has this problem to know itself because Brahman is imperceptible even to itself. So it creates the material universe, so many living beings, and so on, and it induces those beings to contemplate Brahman, to contemplate itself, huh? and act as a kind of mirror to reveal itself to itself so it can realize itself. We talked about that in a recent video. So even Brahman can't prove that it's enlightened. Uh, the only way to know if you're enlightened is if you have the enlightenment experience. What is that? It is a moment when your consciousness changes, when you no longer see yourself as a separate individual being, but as part of the universal whole, connected with everything, part of everything, one with everything. Now, of course, you know, people are going to misuse this and say, oh, it's all one, man, you know. <laughs> you get this so much uh, in the hippie crowd and the, the neo-Adwaita crowd. But it's a lot deeper than that. Because if you realize that I am one with all, you're going to demonstrate compassion, kindness, love. Buddha said, life is hard. One should be kind. And so kindness is not simply passive. It's not just being a nice guy, you know, being polite or something, or even being nonviolent, being vegetarian. I mean, that's the start. But ultimately, it means helping other beings to recognize their own enlightenment. Finally, I want to end off with a quote from Ramana Maharshi. <laughs> I love this quote. Someone asked him this question. How can you prove that you're enlightened? And he said, to claim that one is enlightened or to claim that one is not enlightened is to open broad grounds for ridicule. What? What does that mean? Because we are already Brahman. We have always been nothing but Brahman, and we will always be Brahman. So, you know, if the criterion of enlightenment is to become Brahman, well, we're already Brahman. You see how ridiculous it is? <laughs> So this is the cosmic joke. We are already everything that one might use to define enlightenment. The only difference is some people don't know it yet. But when you realize it, Buddha said this very nicely. He said that the realization of Nibbana, which is basically the same thing as enlightenment, occurs in one moment. And in the very next moment, one has the thought, I have attained. 
Aung Tutsa. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.